As a fellow marketer and communications person, I understand your concern of what are the CEOs thinking. What are they budgeting for? What are they saying? How come they don't understand us? So I invited a CEO that would give you his perspective to unleash the voice of the company. The best one I know is my boss. He gets branding and leads by example in all our communications and PR efforts. A great communicator, externally or internally, in print, email, video, or in-person presentations. Roy Valley is the chairman and CEO of Abnet, a $26 billion company based in Phoenix. And most recently, uh, we're growing, we'll be announcing this soon, it's, uh, it's kind of known, we're going to grow by about $7 billion this year. When Mr. Valley took over the company in 1998, it was $6 billion. So, pretty fast track. As a global leader in valued technology distribution, Abnet is a brand you may not know. But let you tell, I would like to tell you some of our friends and partners. That should give you a clue what we do as a distributor. We sell HP, Intel, Molex, Motorola, Microsoft. And we are IBM's largest customer and channel partner. A few of our global customers are Tell Labs, CDW, Emerson, Siemens, and GE. I mentioned all those companies for one reason. They're in this room. So what else is Roy doing? He's a community leader. He's the vice chair of the National Association of Wholesalers and serves on the Federal Reserve Bank 12th Districts of San Francisco Economic and Advisory Council. He's been honored many times for his Lifetime Achievement Awards, and are in our industry. But I can tell you, as our cultural leader, he takes, it far, takes far more pride in seeing Avnet named most admired in wholesale distribution by Fortune Magazine the past three years. CNBC's Jim Cramer says Avnet is the supermarket of tech and the best bellwether tech company. Cramer recently said to Roy in an interview, Thank you for making our viewers so much money. This is a company that really has had a magnificent run under your direction. I bet it continues. So I'm very proud to introduce our mentor, our leader, and friend, Roy Valley. Okay, good afternoon, everybody. We seem to be missing the uh, clicker. So if that, would, if that would appear, that would be wonderful. Um, Al, thank you for the terrific introduction uh, and uh, for delivering that exactly as my mom wrote it. I appreciate that. And in case everybody's wondering, uh, I'm gonna do my best here to uh, work our way through the uh, presentation and keep you on schedule for the break at uh, 2.30, which I suspect is becoming more and more important. Um, it's a pleasure um, Al, to uh, be here and to support you personally, um, as well as the uh, conference. I'm really happy to be a part of this. So I was asked to come here today and talk to you about the importance of communications and how to use the power of communications to achieve change, um, deliver business objectives, and literally unleash the potential in your companies. But uh, rumor has it that I'm one of the first and maybe the first CEO that's actually been a presenter here. So I would ask you all to be kind with those tweets that you plan on uh, uh, cranking out here soon. And I just have to warn you, if you're not, I will blog about you. Um, and of course the content may not be correct, but the blog will be damaging nonetheless. So, um, and one last thing before I jump in, which is a disclaimer. I actually have no formal education in communications or marketing, and I've never actually worked in that area of responsibility, even though I've done a lot of the jobs at Avnet uh, and the distribution industry. However, what I will do is give you my perspective this afternoon on how I, as a CEO, see the impact uh, and the importance of communications. Okay, next slide. So when I became the CEO of Avnet, um, I reflected on what's my job. And uh, interestingly enough, we, we started with vision and mission. 
Uh, a little more recently, in the last few years, we've added purpose uh, to that equation. Um, and I thought my job was to identify opportunity, uh, to recognize threats, um, and to cause change, to be able to uh, affect change in the organization, okay? Um, and it struck me that communications would play an important role in that. So why are communications important? Well, they are the voice of the company. They are the voice of the CEO. They drive the brand. And in fact, empirical evidence and research says that uh, branding drives stock price. Uh, seven to 10% of a stock price, in fact, can be uh, uh, determined by the brand. Okay? Um, communications also accelerate business's growth and uh, drives progress. Alliance employees and other shareholders and stakeholders strategies and goals. Um, so in other words, comms is the perhaps number one, uh, I'm gonna stand over here since we're, I think we're having some trouble with the mic as well. Comms is the number one, number two, and number three goal to affect change. Um, and I think change is really the essence of leadership, causing things to move in the right direction. So the bottom line is I realized that in order to be an effective leader, I would need to be an effective communicator as Avnet's CEOs. It also struck me uh, as I was taking on this responsibility that in the olden days, uh, when there were teletypes and fax machines, uh, and by the way, if any of you have questions about those, see me afterwards and I'll explain to you what those are. Um, businesses used to have different messages for different stakeholders customers, uh, employees, investors, uh, et cetera. And that was in the process of changing. That idea was no longer going to be possible. If you fast forward to today, things have changed even far more than I could have imagined. Today, communications are real time, they're ubiquitous, they're electronic, they're multimedia, they're one to one, they're one to many, they're many to many. Uh, communications is pervasive. And on top of that, we now have social media, which is sort of like communications on steroids. Um, social media is viral. We've seen some examples of that here this afternoon already. And the reality is that everyone, every single consumer, including you know, the gentleman whose guitar was broken on United Airlines, every consumer has a voice. And if you are still a non-believer in social media, I would encourage you just to ask an Egyptian, you know, who would have thought that a revolt could be planned via the internet and the use of social media websites. Unbelievable change taking place. So corporate messages, and, and bear in mind, this is back in the 1998 time frame, and I was thinking about all of this in the context of what should I do as Avnet's new CEO. Uh, it struck me that corporate communications had to be unified, had to be transparent, they had to be current, they also had to be higher frequency, and they needed to be consistent across all stakeholders. In addition, there were multiple vehicles and mediums, and obviously print media was diminishing in value, not disappearing, but other forms of media were coming on uh, very strong. And in fact, some of these new mediums are relatively inexpensive, some are interactive, and some are actually even measurable um, in the sense that you can tell that roughly 30% of the attendees at this conference have already logged on to certain websites. That kind of information just wasn't available back in the olden days, so to speak. So as I was stepping into the role of CEO, I was thinking about this rising importance of communications and what should I do about it. Avnet had no public relations uh, relationship or firm at that point in time. We had little or no community relations. Um, thank you. Uh, now, let's see if the mic's working. Yeah, I'm going to stick it out over here. Um, and uh, we had no processes for uh, employee communications and consistent messaging to all stakeholders. So it struck me that we needed to add a role to our senior leadership team. And I went out and hired the best chief communications officer that I knew of and that was uh, Mr. Al Mag, who you've already introduced and is going to be the next uh, chairman. And I only wish that I had known about BMA back then because it's possible we could have done better. Um, <laughs> 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 
Hello? Oh, it's still working. Um, so Al is a member of what we call Avnet's uh, executive board. He attends all of our highest level meetings. Uh, he hears and contributes firsthand to what's going on, what, what decisions are we making, why are we making them, how do we plan to do this, um, and is therefore aligned to lead then the communications across our enterprise and in fact even external uh, to customers, uh, suppliers in our case, and also investors. And very similar to other business disciplines, um, Al approaches communications with a strategic lens and merging the art and the science of communications to help achieve our goals. Um, one of the things that Al did early on was suggest that we get engaged with a PR firm. And back in the late 90s, we had already begun to expand globally, even though the vast majority of our business was still uh, here in the United States and North America. But we knew where things were going, and so he thought we not only should have a PR firm, but we should have a global one. So we did a process and we selected this company called Brodeur. Uh, I believe Sonia is here today with us. Um, she never lets me out in public without uh, supervision. Um, and Brodeur has developed into a partner of Avnet's now um, over the last 10 plus years uh, in helping us create uh, excellent public relations on a worldwide basis. And we've become passionate believers that PR is critical to creating and to marketing our brand on a global basis. So as Al came in, there was a wide range of communications activities throughout the enterprise, and he developed a strategic framework that uh, really laid out a process to say, what are the messages that need to be communicated, who needs to communicate them, to whom, how frequently, and what is the most appropriate medium by which to communicate them. In addition, his global communications organization works with every C-level executive within Avnet, to ensure that the communications and the branding are happening appropriately because whether you're in finance or you're in real estate or you're in marketing or sales, branding and communications is important to everyone within the Abnet organization. And uh, the other Roy, uh, don't get us confused as you rate the programs, I was the one that came on first. Um, <laughs> even our tight-fisted CFO, who the other Roy uh, referenced earlier, now acknowledges the importance and the successful impact a communications has had on Avnet. Uh, one last thing, all of our senior executives have been media trained, including their video presentation skills. Again, it strikes me today that to be a successful leader, or maybe better said, the efficacy of leaders today are, uh, is strongly tied to their communications abilities. So what are we doing at Avnet? Well, there's a toolkit. And there's a range of things that you could think of uh, spanning from traditional kinds of activities to perhaps some more contemporary communication strategies. What I'd like to do is just take a minute and share with you a few of the more unique things that we're doing uh, as opposed to um, uh, going through the, the usual suspects. So we, we have an extensive amount of email messaging that goes to our employees, but perhaps on the unique side, we embed a lot of video. We think that, um, that people today, employees as well as customers and consumers, um, really are getting accustomed to uh, digesting content via video as opposed to other types of uh, communication uh, activities. Um, also, uh, similar to the um, IBM slide that was put up uh, just a minute ago, uh, Avnet has launched an intranet collaboration tool that's kind of Facebook-like, but we intend it to be an internal knowledge management tool, uh, thinking along the lines of boundaryless in uh, Jack Welch vocabulary. Um, we also still do in-person town hall meetings. Again, something Mr. Mag uh, incentivized us to do or encouraged us to do. Uh, so we go out to larger facilities and we try to make sure that our largest facilities are visited at least once a year by our C-level executives, if not me personally. And then we have some standardized materials that we go through and then get into uh, a uh, open Q&A session. I'll be doing one of those, in fact, uh, next week in Colorado. We also release our quarterly results via internal videos. So I shoot a video uh, every quarter. 
Uh, we talk about kind of the good and the bad, what's going on in our company, what do, we, what do we do well, and where do we need to improve on in the coming quarter. And then we release that the day of our earnings release, so our employees are up to speed. We then also produce a PowerPoint presentation along with a synopsis that we deliver to the entire management team so that they in turn can have smaller group meetings and talk about how Avnet's doing uh, with all of our troops. A couple of last things on the internal side. We have launched a thing called the Marketing and Communications Awards, MAC Awards, and we look at all of the marketing and advertising that's being done around the world at Avnet and we break that into categories and we provide awards at a formal ceremony for the best efforts in marketing across the organization. This is a, you get a twofer for this one because it's a best practice sharing exercise as well as a very good employee recognition exercise. And then the uh, last thing I'll comment on internally is uh, we've created a, um, a web uh, enabled site that's it's called Ask uh, Roy and Rick. Uh, Rick is our chief operating officer and he'll be succeeding me as CEO effective with our new fiscal year. And um, any and all questions are welcome, none are censored, and every question is responded to. On an external basis, you know, one of our uh, goals is to be viewed within our industry peer group as a thought leader. And as a result of that, we, we try to do things to educate our customer base to, in fact, enable their success. Our brand statement, by the way, is accelerating your success. And with respect to customers, we think about that in the context of helping them grow faster and or helping them save money. Either way, increasing their profitability. So we launched a website called Avnet On Demand. There are, it's a 24 by seven on-demand video portal. And there are now over 700 educational videos. So if you're a designer and you're working on a new product and you need some information about the latest um, digital signal processors. That's always a popular topic. Um, you can go on this website, search, and the videos available for digital signal processors become there at your fingertips. Um, we also, by the way, have quarterly meetings with our outside PR firm, uh, Broder, and we review our results on a quarterly basis and develop the key messages that we want to communicate, again, out to um, uh, business and trade media. Um, we run global product seminars. We have one underway right now with a company called ARM. It's the microprocessor that uh, is giving Intel headaches and winning in most of those mobile devices, uh, including uh, most of the Apple products. Uh, we have a worldwide seminar series for customers that want to think about doing projects in ARM. We have 400 executives now trained uh, with uh, media training. We're getting currently about 50% market share in terms of media coverage within our industry peer group, and we have embraced social media with a range of uh, activities, including the, the usual suspects like Facebook, Twitter, uh, LinkedIn, et cetera. Um, the last thing I wanna point out on the external part is that we are big believers in community relations. Um, we believe that community relations is good for our brand, but we also believe, perhaps even more strongly, that it drives employee engagement. Uh, and employee engagement, in turn, drives the brand. So we like uh, to stay active in the community. And our top priority within our community relations are any activities that our employees are involved with. So if they're out there leading, we want Avnet to be right behind them and supporting their efforts. Let me, with that, jump off into uh, employee communications in specific. Um, I think it just might be the most important form of communications. Somebody brought up, uh, again, the other Roy brought up Sam Walton earlier today, and I know Sam felt strongly about that as well. If, if you take care of your employees, the word will spread and people will start coming into your business. Employees are uh, your most significant branding effort. Um, we did some work with uh, what is now called Towers Watson. It goes back about eight or nine years ago. And we identified this, this notion that employee engagement is very important to the business. And engagement was defined by them as the combination of two things. The employee's commitment, do I want to do a good job? And the employee's line of sight, do I understand what doing a good job really means? Um, there's also evidence that shows that high levels of employee engagement lead to better customer experiences over time which leads to customer satisfaction and customer loyalty, and customer loyalty leads to profitable growth. Okay, 
So in other words, happy employees make happy customers, which makes happy shareholders. Um, so we started a survey process several years ago. Uh, this last survey was done just uh, in the last few months. It included 17,000 uh, employees around the world. We had an 85% participation rate. And uh, for the 2011 survey, our employee engagement scores have achieved the highest level since we began this process. Happened, happens to be a number of 77%. But remember, engagement is the combination of commitment and line of sight. And the line of sight scores are at 84%, which according to Towers Watson is uh, sort of uh, well into the upper quartile, best in class in their global uh, database of companies that participate in this process. And if you think about that, communications plays a very direct role in the line of sight. Have we communicated to the employees what our vision, mission, strategies, and purpose are? Do they understand those things? And then if you couple that with, and do they want to do a good job, you have a very high level of engagement and therefore uh, success. So when it comes to employee communications, I guess the point I'm trying to make here is that the communication efforts of the folks in this room have an impact on line of sight, which has an impact on engagement, which has an impact on company performance. So since we're in Chicago, I'll use the expression, communicate early and often um, with your employees. One other thing I was asked to touch on is M&A. Avnet's been a fairly acquisitive company. That's the way, uh, one of the ways anyway, we've been able to achieve that uh, growth that Al was talking about. We've done about 70 transactions uh, over the last 20 years or so. And the perspective I have is that acquisitions are hard and then integrations are 10 times harder. And um, the interesting thing is that a small number of people actually do the acquisitions and then everyone gets involved in the integrations. Integrations are really an all play. And those new employees that you're integrating into the company really need to be viewed as new hires. They need to be acclimated to the culture, to the values, to the vision, the mission, the strategies, and that needs to be done as quickly as possible. So if that's true, then it strikes me again that communications plays a vital role in accelerating the rate of transition of all acquisitions. Um, and, and one of the things we can do with communications, whereas a lot of the integration work takes place sort of on a hierarchical basis, the communications do not need to be that way. Um, so we have the opportunity through, through effective communications to communicate at all levels and to drive the, uh, the, the integration, uh, accelerate the process, and achieve a higher level of success. What we've done at Avnet is created a documented acquisition process and integration process. And within the integration process, we have a specific subsection for comms. And with every deal we do, there is a project leader assigned to the integration communications activities. And we share with them the best practices and the template from previous uh, integration communication programs. Shifting gears just a bit. Um, social media has already been talked about uh, today, and I'm sure it's going to get talked about a lot more over the next 48 hours, so I'm not going to spend too much time on it, but just sort of a reflection. Social media, as we know it today, did not exist when I became CEO, and I'm thinking forward uh, and just really can't imagine what mediums are going to be available uh, as you look to the future. There's just some very exciting things happening. But one thing that's sort of obvious, and that is, as uh, the technology evolves, as the mediums unfold, um, it is important that we recognize trends like the push to mobility and that we continuously review how we are communicating. So who's communicating, what messages to who, how frequently, and through what mediums, and social media can play a very big role in that. Al touched on uh, what's happened with Avnet. I guess in the category of proof points, uh, let's just say from 98 to uh, uh, this year, we've grown from 6 billion to 26 billion. Our employee base has grown from 8,700 to a little over 17,000. And we have been Fortune's most admired company within our peer group for the last three years in a row. Um, is that a coincidence relative to the work we're doing in communications? I have to tell you that it's very difficult to measure the impact of comms in an Excel spreadsheet and to put it down in numbers. But I can tell you that I am 100% confident, 100% confident 
that without Avnet's strong focus on communications and the contributions of Al and his team, we would not have achieved uh, the results that we're currently achieving. By the way, past, present, or future. So um, let me shift gears now and just try to put myself in your shoes for just a moment before we get to the break. Um, it, it just sort of strikes me again that communications is really not important um, unless you're not worried about, uh, or unless you are worried about, aligning stakeholders, affecting change, attracting and engaging talent, driving your brand, growing, or in short, being successful. So if you're not interested in any of those things, then this is not relevant to you. Um, but the question you might be asking is, how do I get to the C-suite? How do I get my president, CEO, chief operating officer, CFO, uh, engaged with my activities? Um, and, and I think that the simple reality is that there are many different kinds of executives with different backgrounds and different thoughts about the importance and the value of marketing and communications. The way you can help your organizations, though, is by training those folks. Train your bosses. So how do you do that? I think you need to provide research, uh, articles, best practices, and however you get there, build the case for what it is you want to do different in the future from what's been done in the past. What is the case for change? Um, I would also encourage you to think sort of um, financially about this, build a strategic plan, negotiate a budget, and I'm going to give you an example of that here in just a minute, start somewhere, and then grow it over time. Um, the other thing I would say to you is, although it is difficult and maybe even impossible to accurately measure the impact of marketing and communications, I think that there are things that can be done, if not 100% precise, they can be effective. So measure your communications investments and provide regular updates, not only when asked, but on a frequency basis, like quarterly. Go ahead and initiate sort of a, a um, report card on the investments that have been made in communications. And oh, by the way, we're sitting here at the best B2B marketing conference in the world. Leverage your BMA contacts. Take advantage of this uh, conference and, and learn from what others are doing. So let me circle back to a specific example. I mentioned earlier that um, you know, I recognized the need for comms, didn't, knew that I didn't know anything about it, so I tried to get somebody that knew something to come in and help us. And then Al came forward and said, uh, after we'd hired him, I think we need a global PR firm. And my first thought was, well, what did I hire you for? Um, you know, all you're going to do is try to hire somebody else. Um, but we, you know, we talked our way through it, and, and he was very passionate about it. And I thought, well, you know what? I did kind of hire him to be the expert, so maybe I ought to give him a little slack here. Um, however, I wasn't ready to bite off the whole thing the, you know, at the first uh, uh, investment. So what we did is we selected a geography, we launched a beta, we measured the results, we put some ROI around those results, and it was successful. And based on that success, we, we increased the investment. And based on that success, we increased the investment some more. And as I've already mentioned to you, we now have this more than 10-year, uh, very successful global relationship that I would say actually looks more like a partnership with our uh, uh, PR firm, Broder. OK? So I'm going to wrap it up with uh, a few comments and uh, get you off to break. First of all, um, communications are vital to Avnet's success. Um, past, present, and future, as I mentioned already. This is not just important to me and to Avnet as a company. It's got to be important to every business. It's got to be important to your business. And therefore, what you do is important to your business. And that, you know, I guess maybe the, the reality here is that you're not always going to hear how important you are to your company. Um, you're not always going to feel that you're important to your company. But you should never forget that what you do really matters. You impact the success of your business. So I would encourage you to be the change agent. Architect the changes that you think are appropriate for your firm. Measure them and continuously adapt them to stay current, uh, stay relevant, and stay focused. If you can do that, your organization will undoubtedly benefit you will end up being more successful as an individual and happier as a result. I hope, you, uh, I hope I've convinced you 
that I am personally uh, very much a communications champion, and I believe that uh, the work we've done with Al and his team have had a tremendous impact on Avnet's success over the last, uh, let's say, 12 years since he's been there. Thank you very much, and I hope you enjoy the rest of your conference. Thank you.